Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome to the family. My name is Dina. I am so happy to have you guys here. We have already spoken about the earth element, the fire element, and also the water element. And finally, we are talking about the air element. And this is sometimes the final element, depending on who you talk to. Some people believe in a fifth element, which is spirit, which maybe we will talk about that too in the future. But today we're talking about air. And air, I left the last, but it's not the least important. Though sometimes I feel like the air element does get a little bit neglected. It does get a little bit forgotten about because it's something that's not so tangible. It's not something we can really see or feel the same way as we feel the heat of fire or see fire or the way we feel water or the way we feel the earth beneath our feet. Air is something that's a little bit more wispy. Although air gets a little bit forgotten about, it is one of the most important. I mean, they're all important. We need all of these elements, but air is so important to me because I I believe air is literally life force energy. And the reason I say this is because air is connected to the breath itself. And the breath is seen as life force energy. Without the breath, we wouldn't be alive. And not only do we need to breathe to survive, so do the trees. Not that the trees breathe, but they need us to breathe because they need our carbon dioxide. It's so beautiful and interesting the way we're all connected because we breathe in the oxygen that is created by the plants, the trees, through photosynthesis. But then they turn our carbon dioxide into oxygen through that process. So we need each other. There are some common correspondences of air, just so you know. Air is associated with the east. Each element actually has its own direction. The zodiac signs connected to the air element are Gemini, Libra, which is my sun sign, and also Aquarius. So each, you know, zodiac has a connection to an element. And I've always thought, you know, it makes a lot of sense that I am connected to the air element because I often get a little bit airy. Like I get like caught up in my thoughts. And this is another correspondence that air element is tied to is thoughts. And we can kind of lead that into tarot and in that the air element is often connected to to the suit of the swords, which is, you know, connected to thought form, intelligence, that kind of thing. However, this isn't the case for everyone. So you have to also consider that there's different systems. A lot of people do believe that swords are connected to the air element, but sometimes some people see the wands as connected to the air element and swords as connected to fire. So those two get swapped every now and then. I personally follow the pattern that swords are connected to the air element. And like I mentioned earlier, air energy is connected to the breath and the breath is connected to life force energy and I want to add on another layer to this for you because I think this is just so cool but the word inspiration and not just you know, to inspire, like to create. The word inspiration is also considered the word to describe breathing in. So like when you breathe in, you inspire, when you breathe out, you expire, right? So the word inspire itself, its Latin origins literally mean to breathe in. So when you inspire, when you create something, you are literally breathing life. You're breathing inspiration into this world, which is a really cool way to look at it. Now, how do you represent the air element? Because it's not like, you can really feel air very well. It's not like you can really like catch air very well. Of course, unless you maybe blow up a balloon or something, which is one way to represent the air element. But there's so many other different ways to represent the air element on your altar space. So I have a whole bunch of suggestions for you. One is feathers. Feathers represent flight. Flight require the air. I actually love collecting bird feathers. I have quite a few feathers for my own birds because I do have pet birds, but I actually have some turkey feathers as well that I've been gifted and one that I found as well. You can find feathers often at occult shops or there's something that you can pick up and collect yourself. But feathers are a beautiful way to represent the air element and they're just gorgeous and I love having them in general. <laughs> leaves are another fun one. Maybe when leaves fall in the autumn, you collect some of those and you add them to your altar space. For some people, maybe this doesn't resonate with them. But if you think about it, the leaves are very light and they blow and they float and they fly in the wind. So this is another way to connect that element to your altar space. A very popular one is actually incense. A lot of people will use incense for the air element because of that smoke element and the way it kind of floats and flies. You can also just use a tarot card. Maybe you take a tarot card from the suit of swords if you believe it's swords that's connected to air or if you believe it's wand 
ones that are connected to air, you do the wands, but tarot cards are amazing for representing things on your altar space as well. You can also use a yellow candle. Um, there's actually different colors that are associated with different elements, just as there's directions that are associated with different elements. So yellow is actually connected to the air element, and I'll give you all the other ones since I don't think I mentioned this in my other videos, but red is considered to be connected to fire, green is connected to the earth, and then blue is connected to water. Another option is that you could use a wand. If you had a wand or a sword, like an actual wand or a sword, you could put that on your altar space. And a thame, which is like a, basically a knife, can also be placed on your altar space to represent the air element. Another option, which not necessarily everyone will like, and it's not really something that I tend to do, but you could actually use insects. And when I say insects, I mean dead insects. Please don't hurt anything ever. Some people will collect, you know, dead butterflies and, you know, they died of natural causes and you just, you know, framed them or kept them because of their beauty. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is another beautiful way that you can represent air. Maybe you have a butterfly on your altar space. So let's talk about practice itself and how do we connect to the air element in our spiritual practice? One of the obvious ones that I want to start on is breathing deep breathing, acknowledging your breath, really tapping into your breath, and also breath work as well. And when I say breath work, breath work is different than just breathing. Breath work is a more intensive practice. It usually contains a little bit more structure, sometimes different cycles of different variations of breath. Breath work is something that's super interesting to experience and super powerful. So if you have never experienced breath work before, I highly recommend it. You can basically end up in almost like a trance-like state with breath work. No substances, nothing else required. All it takes is some focus and breath work. And I personally like to be led by somebody in breath work. It's not something I usually practice alone by myself. It's something that I'll go to an event for and I feel like I'm safe in this space and I can fully express myself and I don't feel embarrassed or awkward or anything. So it's not something I really do in my house, but I usually go to an event to do. But yeah, breath work can be very powerful. It's really good at bringing things up that you need to work through and it's just an amazing spiritual practice. So if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. But even just deep breathing, tapping into your breath, focusing on the breath, tapping into that life force energy is an amazing way to really connect to that air element. Another way to connect to the air element, and I highly recommend doing, is getting outside. Getting outside, feeling the wind, you know, smelling and sensing that fresh air with every ounce of your being. So, you know, close your eyes because when you close your eyes, you actually feel those things a little bit more. You know, when you're not looking at things, your other senses kind of have to heighten. So if you can, like maybe sit in your backyard and just close your eyes for a while. When you eliminate the sense of sight, you know, your smell, your touch, the rest of your body, they kind of get heightened. So you'll be able to feel like the wind, the air, and smell it a lot stronger. So this is something that you can practice anywhere. Obviously practice somewhere that you're gonna be safe closing your eyes for a long period of time, but definitely something to try out. Maybe even go out on a windy day where you can really feel the breeze. You can even go for a walk. You can just observe the things blowing in the wind. Another way to practice with the air element is to blow on a dandelion, make a wish, and watch those seeds just like disperse into the air and be blown away. This is a beautiful way to work with your intention, but also incorporate that air element as well. Also, any sort of instruments that require your breath, so like certain like horns, or even like a flute, like I have a beautiful handmade flute that I got at a indigenous store. It was like all handmade materials and stuff. It's beautiful. So like you can work with something like that. Any sort of instrument that requires your breath is a beautiful way to incorporate the air element, but then also incorporate music because there's so many ways that music can be you know intertwined into spiritual practice and both music and the air element are very powerful ways to work with your intention honestly a lot of people do magic surrounding you know music and stuff so that is another way you can incorporate that element also dream work and astral projection and things like that also are considered to be connected to the air element because you are working with your mind but some people also believe you're working with your soul so it can be seen as, you know, spirit if you're like considering spirit to be a fifth element. Not everyone does, but it's kind of 
a little bit of both, but yes, dream work, astral projection, things like that are considered to be connected to the air element as well. Writing, scripting, because those are of the mind, your thought form, energy, the power of thought and how you can use that to manifest in your life, that is all connected to the air element. Like I mentioned earlier, using your voice requires air, so singing and chanting is another beautiful way to practice. And a lot of people incorporate this in the witchcraft or spiritual practice and it can be very empowering and sometimes you know just speaking or thinking your intention doesn't feel like it's enough sometimes if you chant it if you sing it it adds that extra layer of power the extra layer of energy and it can be extremely effective chanting has been used for thousands of years in many different practices so this is another way you can incorporate that element like I mentioned you can put incense on your altar space but not just that you can use you know any sort of smoke cleansing clearing to really incorporate that air element and I also want to mention one of the main reasons we connect to the elements and we do elemental magic is because these elements hold a lot of power they hold a lot of energy and we can channel that energy into our practice to make our magic and our manifestations that much more powerful that much more successful maybe think about this give it a try and see what you think but try to channel that air element energy next time there's a storm outside next time it's really blowing and be careful if it's tornado season or something's not looking right make sure you get to your basement or a safe place but maybe you meditate and you really absorb and you you know imagine your energy being charged up by that stormy windy weather it could give you the energy that you need to really take that spell to the next level and you know our energy is beautiful and working just with our energy is okay too but sometimes you can actually make things work better or um, more powerful or more successful by working with the energies that are around you by channeling those energies that are around you so that's just another thing to consider another thing to look at maybe try out in your own practice anyways guys I'm gonna end the video here so it's not too long but I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up it definitely helps out my channel a lot and it lets me know that you like this type of content and don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you guys leave I put up new videos every single week and I wouldn't want you guys to miss out on them I hope you have a beautiful day or night whenever you're watching this and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye guys